Good morning and welcome back. The fourth annual Alamo City Electrothon. It is now underway. One of just 12 sanctioned electric car racing events across North America. Just 12. I like saying the word electrothon. That's fun. Well, students from local high schools and even from Louisiana competed to wait to raise awareness for our STEM education and programs. Photojournalist Robert Samaron met with those involved in the competition as they got their cars ready for today's race. The fourth annual Alamo City Electrothon to uh, show the importance of STEM education. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen inside of a public school setting. Where we're excited about offering the Alamo City Electrothon, a lot of these school districts didn't have some of these programs like CT or STEM. And so this planted some seeds and now what some of these teams started as vocational clubs are now all-out programs in these school districts. This is really where the rubber meets the road as far as taking that knowledge that they have in class and giving it a real application that, that they can see, that they can feel, that they can touch. With just the hands-on component of it, we've, I've had to put so much work into it and so it's so much effort. Us as a team, we've all had to put so much work and effort into this. A lot of kids from different backgrounds and different strengths. You've got kids that are just, you know, real kind of, you know, nut and bolt type kids, uh, gear wrenches, and uh, you've got kids that are more into fabrication. You have kids that are more into just the science part of it. You've got some kids that are more into the design aspect of, of trying to figure out how these parts are going to go together and planning the overall look of the vehicle and they, they really have to work all together to make that final product actually happen. We've been working on this project ever since school started so months it's been months now. I mean, it feels pretty cool a little bit uncomfortable but it is what it is. It feels very good to get this far. Just getting it to run and drive smoothly has been a struggle but we've been able to do that and su surpass that so we're excited to excited for the race. All right, so yesterday was prep day for the Electrothon. Races begin today. The event is free, open to the public if you want to check it out. It starts at 8 a.m. at the Alamo Dome. There's going to be two races, one at 10 a.m. and the second at 1 p.m. The winners will be announced later this afternoon. Electrothon. You know, um, speaking of electricity, mm -hmm. Sarah Spivey, this static electricity, <laughs> my hair is funky. I keep shocking myself on Yeah. Ugh. The, the, it's, it's because, because it's so dry, it's, right? It's so dry, yeah. Sarah. Dew points are in the teens, and they've been that way for a few days here. Yeah, I got a little static shock on my trip to the grocery store yesterday, and we'll continue to see low humidity today as well. Hey, one thing I want to show you is the satellite picture. Uh, now, this is our high-res satellite up in space, and as you can see, Clouds are increasing from the south here, so very soon we're going to be looking at mostly cloudy to completely cloudy skies in San Antonio, but we'll have a little bit of sun to start your Saturday before these clouds completely take over. Uh, but yeah, just keep in mind that we're going to have a fairly gray and cool sometimes even chilly uh, weekend. Now outside right now, it's just plain old cold. It's 33 degrees out there right now. Uh, as Sarah was mentioning, very dry dew points in the teens. We've got winds from the north northeast at about five to 10 miles per hour. That means a wind chill. Yeah, we've got a wind chill. It feels like it's in the 20s around San Antonio this morning, but it's even colder elsewhere. Look at Bernie Stage Airfield, 21 degrees, 21 in Bulverde, 29 in New Braunfels. It's 23 in Kerrville this morning, 19 degrees in comfort. That's the cold spot on the map. Just about every location dealing with the freeze north of Highway 90, with the exception of the airport right now, currently at 33 degrees. But I do think that this will be our last freeze for a little while, at least for a few days in San Antonio, because again, those clouds are going to increase. And this is a perfect example. Look down at Laredo right now. They're just as dry as us in San Antonio, but their temperatures are in the 40s because they've had those clouds. And so in the evening, clouds act like a blanket and keep in the warmth. And during the day, the clouds keep us cool because they keep out the sunshine. So we are expecting a cool day with those increasing clouds. Our temperatures are not going to be able to warm up all that much from where they are right now. Do anticipate a high temperature in the low 50s, close to 50 degrees. 52 in San Antonio for the high, 53 in Kerrville. It'll be a little bit warmer up closer to a New Braunfels in Austin, mid 50s, because they'll see the sun a little bit longer than us in San Antonio. Meanwhile, out in Del Rio, only expect a high near 50 degrees, 48 in Eagle Pass, and 50 in Laredo. So let's talk about that chance for rain that I was mentioning before the break. You know, it's fairly quiet across the U.S. right now, with the exception of some snow across the Great Lakes. But over Arizona right now, you can see very clearly 
a trough of low pressure. And this is going to be moving closer to Texas over the next 48 hours and bringing us the chance for rain on Monday. So let's take a look at that future cast for Monday's chance for rainfall. Uh, as you can see, a good chance for some showers, especially the first part of Monday, and then that'll be pushing to the east by Monday evening. And so really the better chance for rain is pretty much east of a Kerrville to Uvalde line, and that does include San Antonio. Unfortunately, areas like Del Rio and off to the uh, west may only see about a tenth of an inch of rainfall. But around San Antonio through Monday night, we could see about a quarter to half an inch of rain with higher rainfall totals closer to Houston. So just a reminder, today is going to be chilly with increasing clouds. We'll still be in the 40s by noon, just at 52 for the high this afternoon. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, completely cloudy. We'll start off above freezing right near 40 degrees, but we'll only warm up to the low 50s. 60% chance for scattered showers and much needed rain around San Antonio Monday. And then take a look at the week. It's actually going to be fairly cool. We're not going to see highs in the 60s apart from Tuesday of this upcoming week. So a cool week for us with a chance for rain. You know, I'll take it. We don't get this cool weather all the time here in San Antonio. How are you doing? Uh, hanging in there. All right. <laughs> Stars probably thank you so much. 617, 33 degrees out. We'll be right back. Welcome back and go Spurs go a fan favorite Patty Mills making his return to the Alamo City after watching his tribute video. Patty walked over to the Spurs bench big hug from coach pomp all before the new Brooklyn Nets team. Well, challenged his former team last night right here at home at the AT&T Center. Let's take a look at the highlights. Spurs starting off a little slow, but here we go. Beautiful assist to Jante right underneath. Look at that number 31 for two. And here we go. Transition Lonnie Walker the fourth. Boom. Well, dish inside, you gotta love it. Here we go. Running the break to Jante, who I think should be an all-star. A little flip up and good. Spurs clinging on to a one-point lead at halftime. Let's see, could DeJounte and the squad do their thing? Well, I'll give you the answer. It was no. Unfortunately, because of this man, James Harden, the beard, even though he gets blocked there. Wait, slow-mo, and no good, sir. Well, Derek White did what he could, Spurs did what they could, but Spurs would inevitably fall 117 to 102. Back to Patty before his first game back last night as a member of the Brooklyn Nets. Patty met with the media at the team shoot around. It was there he told us how tough it was for him to make that decision in the middle of the Summer Olympics. Remember, he played for Australia, even having to text Pop his decision. Four in the morning, he texted Pop, Tokyo time, after being with the Spurs for 10 years unable to meet face to face because of remember COVID restrictions. It was uh, very emotional. It was a, um, you know, a, a career changing decision. Um, and now that, you know, it's been made and, um, you know, just very glad of, of the opportunities that I had here in, in San Antonio to not only um, through basketball, but um, off the court more importantly in being able to you know, do a lot of growing up here and, and a lot of adulting, uh, I guess, and, um, you know, a lot of the values that, that I learned from, from being here off the court, I think um, I've really appreciated. As Sarah Coast would say, they broke up via text. Uh -huh. But we will always <laughs> love Patty Mills yeah. here in San Antonio. And speaking of San Antonio, next up for the Spurs, another home game tomorrow night hosting the Philadelphia 76ers. Tip-off set for 6 p.m. at the AT&T Center. All right, you don't have to wait until tomorrow to watch sports, though. From the NBA to the NFL, division round of the playoffs, arguably my favorite weekend of the year. The playoffs, we got two games today, Bengals-Titans 3.30 and the Niners-Green Bay 7.15. Those are the two playoff games tomorrow. That is Rams and Bucks and Bills and Sarah Spivey's Kansas City Chiefs. Woo! There you go. So is this the, it's always a divisional round. Divisional round. So like, is that kind of like the semi, no, the quarterfinals. Quarter, uh, yeah, no. Quart no. No, so who, <laughs> who wins here goes to the respective AFC and NFC championship games, and then who wins those games go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, quarterfinal. Sure. Yeah, cool. Okay. That's, that's <laughs> Time now, 623, 33 degrees out. All right, coming up next, a preview of today's episode of Texas Eats. David Elder takes us inside a restaurant serving up some scratch made from scratch quesadillas Ooh. and tacos from Mexico. That's good. If you can eat three of these good 
it on you. The tortillas are where it's at. That's what sets the, the, everything apart. You can tell they're fresh, but they're thin, and it adds a really nice vehicle for all the flavors. The green salsa's got a little kick to it. If you like spice, you gotta try the green salsa. It's a great flavor as well. The chicken thing, you can tell it's been marinated in that sauce. And then the fresh Monterey Jack cheese that's on there as well, melted to perfection. A nice toasted texture on the outside of the tortilla. This is what you want when you're looking for something a little adventurous, but still feels like home. Really good. Owner Aldo Chiavon grew up in the restaurant industry in Mexico. His wife is an amazing cook who combined her style and recipes with Aldo's aunt, a 101-year-old woman with decades of restaurant knowledge. Hungry uh, now. What? I'm hungry now. Oh, I'm always hungry. <laughs> 627, 34 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. 6.30 this morning, Saturday, January 22nd. It feels like January out there. You got to get the coat, scarf. Are you doing okay? I know you hate it's, the cold. It's been it's been tough. You know, I don't leave my house. Yeah. Like I didn't. I feel like I didn't leave the house until around one o'clock yesterday, Sarah, when the sun finally came out for a little bit. It it got what to like the like 50 degrees at the warmest. It was. Yeah, I was in the low 50s yesterday. It's so tough. It's going to be this way for a few days here, Sarah. And on top of that, we're going to see clouds increasing today, too. Take a look out there with the cold temperatures this morning. 31 in Hondo. It's below freezing in Kerrville. 22 in Kerrville. 28 in Rock Springs. 29 in New Braunfels. At the airport, it's officially 33 degrees, but I do think that we could see temperatures uh, drop a degree or two here toward freezing around San Antonio within the next hour. And it is very, very dry out there. Two points in the teens. Now, we were talking about this earlier, kind of joking around, but yeah, it's a static electricity kind of a day because of how dry it is. So uh, you might experience some of that static electricity, some of that static shock. So what's up with the weather? What do you need to know? Well, today, clouds are going to increase, but it's going to stay cool all weekend long. We're likely only going to top off near 50 degrees both today and tomorrow, but we do have a chance for rain on Monday, which we need. Drought is starting to creep back into South Central Texas, so I've got a look ahead coming up at that rain chance on Monday and of course the rest of your weekend too. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, gunfire outside a northeast side home. Right now, we know at least one person shot. Jonathan Cotto joining us live. Jonathan, do we know what led up to the shooting, and do we know the condition of that person shot? Good questions, Max. Well, as of right now, we know police responded to a domestic disturbance call. We've learned that it's a woman that's been shot. As of right now, police are telling us that despite her injuries, she is alive. She was taken to Bamsi in critical condition. But let's take a look at what that scene looked like earlier. It was a violent situation between a boyfriend and his girlfriend at this home on, on Darien Wing. That's a neighborhood near O'Connor Road, just inside Loop 1604. Now, San Antonio police are responding to reports of a shooting just before 3 o'clock this morning. Though it is unclear at this time what triggered the fight between the couple, police discovered the girlfriend with a gunshot wound to the head. Now, the investigation is ongoing. We have uh, learned the boyfriend was taken into custody at this moment. He has not been charged with anything. And again, the girlfriend was rushed to Bamsi. As of right now, we're told she remains in critical condition. This case remains under investigation. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Another shooting overnight to tell you about. Police still searching for who was responsible. This is what we know right now. It happened just after midnight on the northeast side. Police telling us a man was taking the trash to the dumpster at his apartment complex. That's when another man walked up to him and shot him in the leg. So all this happening right off of Shirts Road near Thousand Oaks, north of Wurzbach Parkway, not too far from Morgan's Wonderland and Heroes Stadium. Now, the man who was shot, taken to Bamsey, expected to be okay. Police now searching for the suspect who we're told took off in a black vehicle. Well, voting by mail, it's been a controversial topic, especially after the 2020 presidential election. Texas has a new election law, but some people are still confused by how it's actually changing our registration process in Bear County. Already more than 300 applications, they've been rejected because of human error. Erica Hernandez explains the main changes under Senate Bill 1 when it comes to mail or absentee voting. It's a learning curve because 
The forms have changed. This is that new form or application for a mail-in ballot. Now, the biggest change is you will now have to write down your Texas driver's license number or the last four digits of your Social Security number, and it has to be written in this box on the top of the form. Some of those people did not give us those numbers because it wasn't required when they registered to vote years ago. So if they send in their application and we don't have a number to match it to, then we have to reject it. Other main changes under SB1, an application must be submitted in writing and signed in ink. Electronic signatures, photocopied signatures, or signatures in pencil are not allowed. And election officials may not distribute mail-in ballots or an application for a mail-in ballot to anyone who did not submit a request for an application. I don't want to say it's doubling the work, but it's uh, absolutely increasing the phone calls. Then. The confusion is why it's recommended you mail in those applications now before the February 18th deadline to clear up any discrepancies that may come up. But once our voters get that information to us, they are assured that they'll get a ballot for every election in this calendar year. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Well, now, if you want to look at your full ballots for the March primaries, we have both the Democratic Party ballot and Republican Party ballot available on KSAC.com. That's where you can find the most up-to-date coverage on the 2022 elections. Just vote. Just click on Vote 2022 section under the News tab. Don't forget, you have until January 31st to register to vote. All right, switching to other news around here locally. If you notice smoke in the air on the north side, don't be alarmed. Crews are carefully burning more than 1,700 acres in the area of Camp Polis. The goal is to get rid of any dry brush and lessen the risk of possible fires in the future. This is a prescribed burn and is expected to happen for the next few days. Well, if you're planning on driving along I-35 on the city's northeast side of town tomorrow, there's a lane closure you should be aware of. CPS Energy crews will be working on overhead power lines near I-35 North and O'Connor Road the next couple of Sundays. For safety precautions, there will be intermittent lane closures on I-35 northbound and on the access road between Weedner and O'Connor Roads. Drivers are asked to find an alternative route. The work is expected to take place from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. tomorrow and the following Sunday. Police will be on the site to help with traffic control. Morning headlines. A New York City police officer killed and another injured after a shooting last night in Harlem. This is what we know right now. The officer is responding to a call about an argument between a woman and her adult son. The shooting unfolded and it brings the total of number of officers shot to four NYPD officers in just four days. The officer who was killed identified as only 22 years old. Now, police say the weapons used in the shooting had been stolen from Baltimore in 2017. The suspect also shot there in the hospital, a last check in critical condition. Well, Kyle Rittenhouse could be in court again. He's been added as a defendant in a civil lawsuit in connection with that fatal shooting of Anthony Huber. Rittenhouse was found not guilty of five charges related to killing Huber and another man and injuring a third man during street protest back in 2020. So although lawyers convinced a jury that it was in self-defense, the burden of proof is very different in a civil case. Huber's parents filed a $10 million wrongful death lawsuit against Kenosha and its police department in August. Now there's been an updated motion adding Rittenhouse to the suit. It could prevent him from making personal profit and gain from the shootings, including any possible book deals or speaking engagements. Time now, just about 639, 34 degrees out. We have some high school basketball highlights. All right, a lot of high school hoops in and around San Antonio. We have all the highlights still had on GMSA, plus the boys and the girls teams. And if you're ready to tackle some home improvement projects, we'll tell you which projects are best to complete for each season. Oh. That story after the break. And taking a live look out there at the Alamo City. Speaking of home improvement, will it be a good day to do projects on your Too home? cold. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. If your New Year's resolutions or goals included any home improvement project, projects this year, it's time to get started. In this morning's Ask Angie segment, RJ Marquez discusses the best projects for each season so you can tackle each one at the right time. It may seem like winter is the time to put all home projects on hold, 
but there's actually a lot you can get done right now. If a deck or patio is on your list for next spring and summer, go ahead and find your pros now and start the planning process and get a head start. Also, you might find some off-season deals if you go ahead and hire your pro now. If you're thinking about fixing any foundation issues or building an addition, consider starting while the temperatures are still low. The frozen ground and dry air in winter are easier to deal with than the higher humidity or wet soil of spring or summer. Getting your project done faster means you're spending less on labor cost. Winter can be a great time for indoor projects. Think about any interior home painting you might want done or indoor room remodels. If interior painting is on your list, it's an excellent time because there's no humidity that is often in the spring or summer and so the paint dries more evenly. Additionally, for room remodels, demand is lower in the winter particularly in materials, you might find some savings. As you look beyond winter to prepare for projects in the spring, pencil in deck or patio building, installing new windows and adding insulation. The softer ground will make it easier to build your deck or patio and you can have it ready to enjoy all summer long. Windows are popular in the summer, so get ahead by booking them for the spring when it will also be more comfortable for the pros who have to work outside. Once it warms up, think about any fireplace and furnace repairs. You're likely not to need these during the warmer months, but they'll be in perfect condition when it gets colder and you'll be ready to go. Additionally, if you're thinking about any major renovations, try syncing them up with your summer vacation. This way you'll get a break from living in the mess and you'll come back to a newly remodeled home. And fall will be a great time to get good deals on landscaping services since peak season will have already passed. The cooler temperatures and moist soil are great for planting and you can start winterizing your outdoor spaces at the same time. Also consider replacing appliances around Labor Day and Black Friday sales. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. All right, so Sarah Spivey, you had something to say. You said uh, for, uh, the ground rarely freezes here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll get a Rarely. light freeze. <laughs> yeah, we'll get a light freeze uh, because temperatures are below freezing for a few hours, but the ground hardly ever freezes <laughs> here in San Antonio. But it's still too cold to do anything outside. I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. And let's take a look outside, and you can actually see some clouds increasing right now as we speak with the first light of the day. Let's take you over to the satellite, and those clouds are increasing from the south, as you can see, but we're still dealing with clear skies, New Braunfels, Canyon Lake, Bernie, Kerrville area, wider view. Look at the clouds increasing from the south. It's completely overcast in Del Rio Eagle Pass, Catula, and that's having a pretty big impact on temperatures this morning. It's actually fairly warmer out in Del Rio where they've been having that cloud cover act as a blanket, keeping things a little bit warm, but it's still chilly. It's 43 out in Del Rio. Meanwhile, it's below freezing in Rock Springs, Kerrville at 20 degrees, 29 in New Braunfels, 32 in Gonzales. Here in San Antonio, we may dip to freezing just briefly here before we see uh, uh, that complete sunrise and then because the clouds are going to increase today, it's going to keep our temperatures on the cool and chilly side. In fact, I really don't expect for us to warm up all that much above the low 50s, right around 52 for the high in San Antonio, 54 in New Braunfels. Look out toward Del Rio. I think you'll stay uh, in the upper 40s near 50 degrees today, 46 for the high in Laredo, 47 in Crazy Springs where they get the clouds a little bit earlier than us in San Antonio. But then tonight, we won't have to worry about a freeze tonight. And the reason for that is those clouds are going to act like a blanket, as I just mentioned. So by the start of the morning tomorrow, we'll actually be uh, right near 40 degrees, so a little bit warmer uh, than uh, where we're at right now. And we won't have to worry about that light freeze early tomorrow morning. It should be in the low to mid 40s just everywhere as we start our Sunday tomorrow. It's going to stay dry, though. Dew points are in the teens, as I mentioned earlier, not only could this cause a little bit of static electricity out there? But it's also chapstick weather. You need the chapstick, you need the hand lotion, all of those things, because it is very dry. And speaking of dry, take a look at the drought monitor. Drought is increasing around South Central Texas. We've got uh, even moderate drought along uh, and west of 281 in San Antonio, up toward New Braunfels and Canyon Lake, even some severe drought out toward Del Rio. And then the real bullseye of drought is out uh, in parts of the Winter Garden region. So Carriza Springs, Catula, all under extreme drought. We need the rain, and we do have a small chance for rain coming up in the next few days, especially on Monday, uh, but 70% of the state is in drought. 
When are we going to see that rain? Well, it looks like Monday, especially the first part of Monday. We've got a 60% chance for scattered showers during the first part of Monday, all because of this trough of low pressure, which is currently over Arizona. You can see that spin there in the upper levels of the atmosphere. That low is going to bring energy our way. And again, I think uh, First part of Monday, we have a good chance for scattered showers in San Antonio. As you can see on the future cast, this is early Monday morning. Good chance for some uh, dampness on Monday, but by the second part of the day, that'll be east of uh, San Antonio. How much rain could we see? I think it's a fair bet around San Antonio to see a quarter to half an inch of rain. Unfortunately, that area that's under extreme drought really only has a chance for about a tenth of an inch of rain or so with higher rainfall totals the further east you go. So out toward Houston, closer to an inch of rainfall, but around San Antonio, about a quarter to half an inch of rain. While that's not a drought buster by any means, we'll take any chance of rain that we can get. So just a reminder that today we'll be seeing increasing clouds. It'll be a mostly cloudy day with a high temperature only near 52 degrees because of those increasing clouds east winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour for your Sunday starting out above freezing. So that's some good news there, but another cool day because it'll be completely cloudy scattered showers Monday for us. And even in the week ahead, we're really not going to warm up all that much. We'll only be in the 60s Tuesday before another cold front moves through. That'll keep our highs in the 50s. So it's going to be a cool seven days here in San Antonio. I'm fine with the cold as long as there's sunshine. Max told me that he hasn't put his heater on at his place. Yeah, no, haven't needed to yet. But you're you're only at 68 degrees. Only at 68. That's reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. But once it creeps down like 64, My then house I'm is like, a little old. If I if that happens, it's like 62 and it's like freezing inside. <laughs> so I'm now 649, 34 degrees out. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, two, six, eight, fireball five, daily four, five, four, three, five, fireball nine. And your cash five, three, 19, 24, 25, 26. Look at that. And here you go, Mega Millions. Did you play? No. Uh, it's, not... it's big. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 300 and something or over. There. Okay. Yeah. 38, 45, 46, 55, 67. Big number 18, Mega Pyre 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. We talked about the Spurs. Now it is time to talk about high school hoops. Big action last night. 27-6A showdown. Judson and Wagner. Thunderbirds in a hole in the first half. Eddie Fernandez drove to the bucket. He got two. Cuts the lead a bit, but the Rockets rolling last night. Wait for it. Wait for it. We have some good ball movement going under. But Christian Pillow, he had a nice two-handed slam. You got to appreciate a slam in high school. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Look at that. Stop right at the free throw line, and that's a swish. Judson, though, knocking off Wagner, 66-63. Pulls into a tie for the district lead. All right, now to girls' hoops. 27-5A, Edson taking on Burbank. Bulldogs look to rally in the second quarter. Ooh, beautiful jumper. Cuts the lead down to five, but the Golden Bears answer late in the frame. Mary Esther Sosa, a triple at the buzzer. Sending Edison into halftime up 27-19. They're going to win 51-40. Girls. All right. Oh, wait, this is still you. No, no, you can take it. Take it away. <laughs> no, no, all you. Finish it off strong. All right, you can find more highlights of your favorite high school team on our website, kset.com. Just click the big game coverage section on the sports tab. All right, time now. 654, 34 degrees out. Well, if you're looking for a new place to hang out this weekend, Kung Fu Saloon. Max is doing his kung fu, <laughs> is now open. It's an arcade-themed bar with vintage vibes. It's located next door to its sister bar, Camp 1604, over by Top Golf. But this bar is only for people 21 years and older. You can read more about it right now on kset.com. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. An arrest has been made in a shooting that left one woman dead on the city's east side. We know that happened just days before Christmas. 24-year-old Aaron Jacob Gutierrez was arrested Tuesday for the murder of 35-year-old Maria Gonzalez, who was killed on December 16th after leaving a bar on Hayes Street, not far from North New Braunfels. Police say a group of people were leaving that bar and heading towards their cars when someone inside a white car fired off several shots. 
one of them striking Gonzalez in the head. San Antonio police responding to the scene around 1 a.m. that morning. And according to an arrest affidavit, they were able to search his cell phone. They discovered he received a screenshot of a news article from an unknown person telling him police didn't have much to go off of, that he should be okay. Now, Gutierrez had then replied that he was scared. The unknown person also messaging him to keep the murder weapon along with other guns of the same caliber at his home. Now, Gutierrez is facing murder charges as well as several others. This is a case that we're going to continue following closely and update you as more information is made available. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Take a look at temperatures around the metro area. Even though it's slightly above freezing at the airport, it's 28 degrees at JBSA Randolph, and it's 23 at Bernie Stage, 20 in Comfort, 19 degrees this morning in Kerrville, 29 in New Braunfels. Today, we're going to see increasing clouds, so we're not going to be able to warm up all that much. Really only a high temperature in the low 50s. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow will be cloudy and cool, too. We won't see a freeze tomorrow morning, though. And then I'm looking forward to Monday, because mm. even though it's going to be gray, and cool, we do have a chance for rain, and we could really use the rain around here. Drought is increasing. Yes. All right. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. we got a lot coming up after an hour of GMA. Yeah, uh, 8 a.m., Jonathan Cotto is going to be on Meals on Wheels, and then afterwards in the 9 a.m. show, he's going to mm -hmm. be at that Electrathon. Yes. Which is really cool. Very exciting. Only one of 12 locations around North America where electric vehicles can race, and local students get involved. So we'll see you back here at 8 a.m. Stay warm. <laughs>uh, hot liquid, so coffee, tea, um, you know, some warm whiskey. Whiskey. Sarah Spivey. <laughs> well, hopefully the whiskey's not warm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah. it warms it warms the soul. There you go. It warms That's the soul, true. exactly. <laughs> All right, we're talking about that early in the morning. Let's go ahead and take a look outside. We do have some sunshine to start our Saturday. Unfortunately, though, this is a bit deceiving because we are going to see increasing clouds throughout the day today, and tomorrow should be fairly cloudy. But so soak up the sun while you can right now. It is cold, though, out there this morning. Many areas at or below freezing. At the airport, we reached 32 degrees briefly, but now we're back up to 34. It's 28 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 30 in Bandera in the teens in comfort. It's 19 degrees in comfort and 24 in Kerrville, 28 in Hondo, 30 in New Braunfels and a wider view here, 32 in Rock Springs. Notice that it's a little warmer for Catula, Del Rio. There's actually some clouds down there and out there and, and they're going to be increasing around the metro area today. So expect increasing clouds, a high temperature going to be kind of chilly today. We'll spend most of our day in the 40s, really only topping off right near 52 today, this afternoon. And then tomorrow, Sunday, we will be cloudy. Clouds are going to be hard to shake tomorrow. At least we'll start off above freezing, topping off only near 52 degrees tomorrow as well. But we do have a chance for rain in the forecast, and it's much needed rain too. So that's why you see me smiling through the chance for rain. I'll have updates uh, on when we can expect the rain and for the rest of your weekend when those clouds are going to be moving in. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, an argument turns into a shooting and sent one woman to a hospital with a gunshot wound to the head. Police arrived at the 17,000 block of Darren Wing on the city's northeast side around 245 this morning. They say they found the woman on the ground with a gunshot wound to her head. Authorities say some sort of argument occurred between the woman and a boyfriend. That boyfriend has been detained by police, but he has not been charged at this time. The woman was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Police continue their investigation. 
All right, another shooting to tell you about also on the northeast side. Well, this morning, police searching for who is responsible, who pulled the trigger. This is what we know right now. It happened just after midnight. This is Heroes Village Apartments, the 4500 block of Shirts Road. That's near Thousands Oak Drive. Police on the scene telling us a man was throwing trash into the dumpster. That's when someone walked up and shot him in the leg. Officers say the suspect jumped into a black vehicle, drove off. As for the man who was shot in the leg, he was taken to Bamsey. Police say the victim did not know who the suspect is, and they are still searching for him. Well, there is a new development this morning in a murder investigation that happened back in December. According to a police affidavit, the man on your screen, 24-year-old Aaron Jacob Gutierrez, is charged with murder in connection to the death of Mar Mary Gonzalez back on December 16th of last year. Police arrested Gutierrez on drug and weapons charges when he allegedly confessed to being the driver of the car involved in that deadly shooting. Well, the shooting happened on Hay Street near North New Braunfels Avenue on the city's east side. Police say several people were leaving a bar and were hanging out at the corner when someone started shooting. Officers found 35 year old Gonzalez shot in the head. To the latest number of COVID-19 cases here in Bear County on Friday, Metro Health reporting more than 5,300 new cases. Another 16 people have died. The seven day rolling average is close to 6,200. There are 1,200 COVID-19 patients in the hospital as of last night. 260 are in ICU and 115 are in ventilators. All right, so the COVID surge continues to impact our daily lives as well as our hospitals. Schools, a big problem across the country, including here in and around San Antonio. They are dealing with a substitute teacher shortage. So over at Northeast ISD, the Omicron variant and the wave, it has doubled the staff absentee rate compared to pre-pandemic numbers. And when schools can't find substitute teachers, principals step in. At NEISD, classes are combined. They even had to pull staff from the central office to step in and substitute teach. All of this on top of two years where nationwide education took a big hit because of shutdowns and quarantines. So district officials are actively encouraging parents and even college students to consider being substitute teachers. And some people, even those who have never taught before, they are stepping up right in front of the class, helping keep local students on track. I think it's a community issue because these kids are our future. So whether it's subbing or coming and sitting with a class or helping at, at lunch, there's places you can help. I want to help out as many teachers as I can to kind of lessen the stress. And speaking of helping out, some districts even changing the requirements to be a substitute teacher. They're very increasing the pay. On our website right now, ksat.com, we have links to substitute teacher requirements for North Side, Northeast Side, and SAISD. For more specific information, you can contact the school district's central offices. And speaking of COVID-19 affecting children, a recent CDC study shows that there may be a link between children who get COVID-19 and type 1 diabetes. In some cases, they are diagnosed as soon as a month after getting COVID-19. A local doctor says there are still some gaps in the study and more information is still needed. Patty Santos explains the signs to look out for in children who have had COVID. This study is the first stab at saying, you know, there really is something there. We just don't understand it. Dr. Norm Christopher with Children's Hospital of San Antonio says COVID-19 and diabetes has been a trend in adults. Those in his fields have been tracking. While the latest study by the CDC has some gaps, it does support what they're seeing in kids, too. What they concluded is that there is an interplay between COVID and diabetes that as COVID incidence goes up, the incidence of diabetes goes up. CDC scientists compared findings from different studies. That means there are disparities. The CDC analysis lacked important details like the kids ethnicity, gender and the type of diabetes they got. But he says it establishes a first step in finding a way from stopping it. It sets the stage for really understanding more clearly why there's a relationship and how to, you know, how to interrupt that relationship. For Aaron and Pat Alba, whose son has battled type 1 diabetes for eight years, this study raises awareness for families to be on the lookout for signs if their child has had the virus and follow up with a doctor. So you're going to want to be paying attention to things like frequent urination, uh, loss of appetite or increased appetite. 
And then also um, weight loss, weight loss, rapid weight loss. Yes. And, and low energy. The couple works with families through JDRF, a research and advocacy group for those with type 1 diabetes. The goal of the foundation is to raise money to find a cure for type 1 diabetes. Looking at family history could be an added concern, they say. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 8.08, 34 degrees out. All right, lots of going on. <laughs> lots of, more drama. More drama for the Cowboys <laughs> in the offseason, though. Jerry Jones has a little side eye for the head coach. We're going to talk about what the future of Mike McCarthy and the Dallas Cowboys could look like just ahead. Meals on Wheels will be out and about this morning, making sure our seniors are prepared and fed during these cold winter days. Jonathan Cotto will be live next. And we're going to see him wearing a coat, maybe even a scarf, because it is cold out there, 34 degrees. It is January, and it feels like it. What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Good morning. Welcome back. Happening today, Meals on Wheels, making sure their clients are repaired. Should things keep them from making deliveries by holding their largest food giveaway to date? Jonathan Goto is joining us live at that distribution event this morning. Good morning, Jonathan. What's happening? Good morning, Sarah. Well, I'm just trying to find warmth here through the masses. About 400 volunteers gathered here this morning to help distribute those meals to the most vulnerable in our population. Of course, as we learned valuable lessons coming out of last year's winter storm, folks here are ensuring that doesn't happen again and people have the adequate supplies, the food they need to be able to sustain any any weather conditions. But with me, Chief Strategy and Development Officer for Meals on Wheels Forest. No stranger to our KSAT cameras. Good morning, Forrest. Good morning. Thanks for being out here today. Our pleasure. Thank you for everything you're doing. Now, what is taking here, place here this morning? We know meals are being delivered, but talk to me a little bit about the effort in, in today's operation. Sure. So this is our biggest delivery event like this that we've ever done. We're serving 4,500 clients across eight counties this week. Today, we have about 400 volunteers coming through. They're picking up these boxes as well as bottles of water, hand warmers, emergency blankets to deliver to our clients an event of another winter storm. And I know last year, you know, we, we were expecting the storm to hit us, but it did catch us by surprise in many, many ways. A lot of folks weren't able to, to prepare for that storm and were left without food for several days. Today is an effort to, to keep that from happening, correct? Absolutely. We uh, were unable to deliver to our clients for five days last year. Now, they had extra food, so, you know, they were they weren't totally without, but this year we want to get ahead of the game. So we're making sure that they've got food that can sit on their shelves on their pantry that doesn't require heat, doesn't require electricity to eat, and is easy to open because a lot of our clients have uh, dexterity issues. Well, thank you so much, Forrest. We're going to continue to hang out here, Max and Sarah. We're looking at it off of Higgins and Nacogdoches. Volunteers are going to be setting out. Some are already loading up their cars and will be taking off here shortly. Reporting here on Meals on Wheels, Jonathan Cotto. Back to you, Max and Sarah. Thank you, Jonathan. I know when it's cold, I don't leave the house. So He's prepared, though. He's got the scarf. He's got the jacket. Sarah Spivey, is he able to take that off anytime soon? It's 34 degrees out I there. feel like it's been 34 since, like, 6 o'clock. <laughs> you know, it actually has, Sarah. Okay. It's so, been uh, that yeah. cold for that long, and even colder elsewhere. Now, today, we're going to warm up a little bit, but it's still going to be a chilly day. We'll probably only top off in the low to mid-50s for the high. So that's sweater weather all day long. Let's take a look at some satellite pictures because I want to show you that even though we're starting off with some sunshine, clouds are increasing from the south. And so throughout the day today, we are going to see increasing cloud cover and you can even make out some of those clouds there off in the distance. So we're We'll be seeing these the clouds increase, so get out there and soak up the sun if you want a little bit. You'll just need that jacket because it is cold out there. It's 34 degrees right now. We do have a wind from the northeast at about 5 miles per hour. That gives us a wind chill. It feels like it's 30 degrees, and it is bone dry out there. Dew points are in the teens. That is very, very dry air, and that's one of the reasons why the dry air is why we've been able to see temperatures cool down quite a bit. In fact, it's still below free Freezing in New Braunfels, where it's 30 degrees, 23 in Bulverde, 30 in Rio Medina, 28 in Hondo, and it's even 19 degrees in Comfort. Elsewhere, we're seeing temperatures around uh, Bear County above freezing, and again, we'll be able to warm up today, but 
not by all that much. It's still going to be a chilly day uh, most of the day with temperatures again just struggling to get into the low 50s. It's 43 right now in Del Rio and 42 in Catula. Again, Del Rio and Catula have a little bit more cloud cover than San Antonio. And so in the overnight hours, they've been able to stay just a little bit warmer, but it's still chilly everywhere you look. Take a look at the future cast. This is where that cloud deck currently is, and we'll be seeing that increase throughout the day today so that by the afternoon, we'll likely have mostly cloudy to completely overcast skies. So again, the first part of the day will have some sunshine. The second part of the day is going to be fairly cloudy and those clouds will prevent us from warming up all that much, although we will be a little warmer than yesterday. High temperature expected to be in the low to mid 50s around San Antonio, closer to 50 degrees though in Carrizo Springs, Eagle Pass, Del Rio, where the clouds are going to hang around for most of the day. All right, on the satellite radar, a good portion of the nation is pretty much on ice this morning, but we're looking to the west for our next system. This is going to be the one that's going to bring us a chance for some rain. Our best chance for rain in a while really around San Antonio. That upper level low is going to be moving in from the west and giving us some energy. Even though it's fairly dry at the surface, we'll tap into a little bit of moisture. And so for the first part of Monday, it looks good for rain around San Antonio. Scattered showers are likely around San Antonio, but the further west you go, better a less of a chance for rain, unfortunately, for areas like Del Rio Eagle Pass. But then by the middle part of the day on Monday, most of that rain will be off to the east. So as far as rainfall amounts, how much could we expect to see? Well, I think it's a safe bet around San Antonio that on Monday we'll see anywhere from a quarter to half an inch of rain around San Antonio with much lesser amounts, unfortunately, off to the west and higher amounts further off to the east. So toward Houston, half an inch to an inch of rainfall is likely. Once again, Again, today is going to be a chilly day. We're going to be seeing increasing clouds so that by the afternoon it'll be mostly cloudy or even overcast in many spots. We'll still be in the upper 40s by noon and then low 50s for the afternoon high temperature. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. You know, we were at a freezing start this morning, but tomorrow morning I believe we won't have to worry about a freeze. And then in the afternoon tomorrow, once again, low 50s, but tomorrow's going to be cloudy all day long. So again, enjoy some sunshine out there while it's out now. Again, in the afternoon, it should be uh, start to become fairly cloudy. 60% chance for scattered showers on Monday, especially during the first part of the day. And then look at the temperatures over the next seven days. We're really not going to warm up all that much. We'll get up into the 60s on Tuesday, but that'll be the warmest day in the next seven days. So looks like we've got our one to two weeks of winter. It's arrived in San Antonio. <laughs> it's here. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 818, 35 degrees out. All right, so the CEO whose controversial hiring had people talking is back on the job with the new approach on how to treat employees. Yeah, he fired so many people. Over Zoom. Such a ridiculous matter. We're going to have a big mm -hmm. update to that story. Another update, we're going to have the Cowboys coaching situation. Jerry Jones kind of chiming in the last week. We're going to explain what that means and what the future of this guy, Mike McCarthy, what it looks like just ahead. Yeah. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. All right, so Cowboy Nation, we know that you're still dealing with last Sunday's deflating loss against the San Francisco 49ers. But yesterday, Cowboys owner Jerry Jones did not give head coach Mike McCarthy a re-endorsement, saying he's still upset about the way that the team ended the season. In the first round of the NFL playoffs against the Niners, they had a chance to win it even in the closing seconds. That is after the Cowboys were penalized 14 times and that resulted in 89 yards. It's a chronic problem that the team has dealt with all season long, with McCarthy telling us it's his number one priority this offseason. That comment not sitting well with Jerry Jones, who addressed that during his weekly radio appearance in Dallas just yesterday. One of the pet peeves I have is that I don't like this, well, we've got to work on this in the offseason. We've got to work on this. Uh, I don't go for that. I've been trying to push that. Uh, I want those things recognized and addressed after we play Tampa, after the first game, or after we play the sixth game. I don't want to wait until we're sitting here uh, with no season left to address these things we're doing or not doing. Mm, Jerry's not happy. You were laughing a little bit. During the just some, I, I'm a Cowboys fan. You're right. And I take the pain mm, with it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but there's always something with the Cowboys. Gotta love them. Always something. All <laughs> right, we'll see how that plays out. But for now, time is 823, 35 degrees out.
Well, he's back. The CEO who made Scrooge do a double take is going back to work after he fired 900 employees right before Christmas via Zoom. Why he says he's changed. All right, after taking a leave of absence, Better.com CEO, he is back and he is fully employed. So this comes after he said he had time to reconnect with the core values that make his company a great place to be part of. Well, we're talking about Vishal Garg, who fired 900 employees without notice over a Zoom meeting right before Christmas. Well, soon after he apologized and took a leave of absence amid the controversy over the mass firing, Employees were told Tuesday in a letter that he was returning to his full CEO duties. Now, according to the letter, he used his time away to, quote, reflect on his leadership and to work closely with an executive coach. It's like a personal trainer for your mood. Yeah, I, I still wouldn't be very happy if I was one of those employees. That's fair. Mm -hmm. All right, time to take your talents elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. 827, 35 degrees out. Well, how to live through a home renovation without stressing out? We're asking the experts later in GMSA. But first, bullets hitting a man sitting at his own kitchen table this morning. More than 50 bullets fired. We have the latest. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. 8.31 this morning, Saturday, January 22nd. We both came off of our respective quote-unquote weekend, so what did you do on your time off? I barely left the house. Okay. It got sunny yesterday, mm -hmm. but it still was too cold for me. You said you were, like, outside during that time, enjoying it. <laughs> so, um, Wednesday evening, girlfriend had some friends over, put on a gorgeous charcuterie board, so shouts to her. Uh -huh. uh, and then yesterday... We started Ted Lasso. It was fantastic. Great show if you haven't watched it. Walked outside, tried to get some sunshine because that was it. I mean, we spent so much time inside in the uh, the apartment, Sarah's private. I needed the sunshine. I'm sorry, Max. I love you. I got to make fun. Go for <laughs> it. Charcuterie board yeah. from Ted Lasso. Hey, I mean, that's kind of the life. Awesome. That's the life. I, I wish I could live that life over my weekend. All right, but you know what? It is cold out there right now in spite of the fact that we're seeing sun. So we are seeing some sun to start off our day, but uh, it's still cold out there. It's 26 in Kerrville, 28 in Hondo, below freezing up in New Braunfels. It's 30 degrees. At the airport currently, we're measuring 34, but we did dip down to freezing at the airport uh, just briefly. 37 in Pleasanton, 43 in Del Rio, and 42 in Catula. A little bit warmer out toward Del Rio, Catula. We do have some clouds that are trying to push in, and they will today throughout the day. Off on the horizon there, you can actually see that cloud deck. So even though we're seeing sun right now, we will be seeing uh, cloudier skies by this afternoon. So enjoy it while you can. It's also very dry out there. Dew points are in the teens. We've been talking about this all morning. Not only is it chapstick weather, but it's static electricity weather. Shocking out there today if you're not careful because of the dry air in place. So what's up with the weather? Clouds are going to increase today and it's actually going to be cool all weekend long. Temperatures are going to struggle to get out of the low to mid 50s this weekend. And for those of you who have been wanting rain, a lot of us have been needing rain. We do have a rain chance on Monday, so I'll detail that coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a terrifying situation all unfolding in the 200 block of Cumberland Road. One man in the hospital this morning and right now police investigating. Take a look. This was the scene after more than 50 gunshots. Now, officers on the scene saying a 24 year old man was just sitting at his kitchen. That's when he heard gunfire outside his home, a stray bullet hitting him in the leg, taken to BAMC at last check in stable condition. But outside, police found more than 50 shell casings right in the middle of the street. No suspects in custody yet. We are still waiting to learn what prompted the gunfire and who was the target. All right, happening today, happening right now, Meals on Wheels hosting its largest food distribution. Their motivation, emergency preparedness. Our Jonathan Cotto is joining us live. Jonathan, who is this aimed at? You know, this is targeted for those folks who are just, you know, are, are going through food insecurity, you know, that were placed in a very vulnerable position last winter storm. And of course, you know, that catching a lot of folks by surprise. But today there are folks, really good people making sure that that doesn't happen again. And those families have what they need to 
to survive at least a couple of days here. And with me, CEO Meals on Wheels, Vincent. Good morning, Vincent. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. Hey, to be out here having fun, though, don't you? It is, it is very, very chilly. And I see that one of the items inside one of those packages is exactly what we need right now because I'm not wearing gloves. What can folks expect to receive? I tell you, this box right here has a, a, a equivalent of five meals in it. And this is uh, one of the things that you're calling out here is a hand warmer. So we are to have hand warmers and some Mylar blankets today. Should there be a case of, of needing some extra warmth in a, a winter storm? should come upon us here but this is high caloric foods we're we're nutritionally dense here and it's a five meal equivalent shelf stable has a, a shelf life of three to six months here but a person if this was all that they had this would sustain somebody very well for three days so we hope that doesn't come to that but this is an emergency box we're asking our, our friends to put them on their shelves leave them alone don't touch them unless they need them we start getting through the winter weather they haven't been touched we of course want them to eat them then but this is to help sustain them should an emergency occur which we hope will not such a great effort. Now, Vincent, I know last year, many folks, including myself, you know, we were without electricity, without water, without access to grocery stores, right? So this is going to be a valuable, valuable box to have in the pantry. That is. You know, you're seeing juices here, mac and cheese, applesauce. Uh, there's some crackers and, 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 and some dried fruit, what have you like that. All very, very good. We specifically selected it for our, our clients out there because, it, it, you know, if you don't enjoy what you're eating, it doesn't go, it, you know, it just doesn't sit nearly as well. This is fun stuff to eat. It tastes great. So, uh, you know, this, this is a very special box on a very special day with 22,000 meals actually being delivered across San Antonio and Bear County. 22,000 meals. We have over 400 volunteers. It's a chilly morning, but you know what? The effort warms us all up. It really, really does. This is a very special day, Jonathan. Thank you so much, Vincent. Thank Max and Sarah, we're going to continue to hang out here with Meals on Wheels. For now, we'll send it back to you. Thank you, Jonathan. Great stuff out there. All right, in today's morning headlines, while nearly every U.S. county is still reporting high transmission of COVID-19, nationwide, the number of daily cases, it's actually down about 5% in just the last week. But the daily deaths now stand at nearly 1,750 nationwide, with the number of fatalities projected to increase over the next four weeks. The CDC is pointing to three new studies highlighting the protection provided by getting not just vaccinated, but also boosted. ABC's Zareen Shah is in California with the story. This morning, a promising CDC study showing the strength of boosters. The study confirming a third shot cuts the risk of landing in the ER or urgent care by 94% when it comes to the Delta variant and 82% for Omicron. Another study showing if you are completely unvaccinated, you're 14 times more likely to be infected and 53 times more likely to die compared to people who are boosted. Second, protection against infection and hospitalization with the Omicron variant is highest for those who are up to date with their vaccination, meaning those who are boosted when they are eligible. But many of those eligible still haven't gotten the vaccine. The U.S. recording over 18 million new cases in the last month alone, more than a quarter of the nation's total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases reported since the beginning of the pandemic. With COVID-19 tests still in short supply, testing processing labs like this one in North Carolina slammed, trying to meet demands. We've seen large increase in the amount of samples, large increase in the amount of positivity among those samples. So it's been all hands on deck. But some places like San Francisco are starting to plateau when it comes to cases. The light at the end of the tunnel is here. Nationwide, a 10% decrease in cases. The CDC acknowledging that drop while also issuing a stark warning. Let me just say, cases are coming down. We still are at um, extraordinarily high levels of disease. In Wisconsin, hospitals overrun. We're finding we've had to put patients sitting on a cot in the hallway in a perfectly public space um, just because we there was nowhere else to go. Everybody's exhausted. Exhausted with many states still dealing with a surge in Southern Arizona. The National Guard has stepped in. They say if they weren't there, nurses would manage, but the level of care would go down at that point. Zorin Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. 
Well, the Food and Drug Administration has extended the use of the antiviral remdesivir for treatment of mild to moderate COVID-19 patients. The medication received emergency use authorization back in May of 2020. Back then, it was only used for people who were hospitalized with severe COVID. On Friday, the agency expanded the use to include COVID-19 positive high-risk patients who have mild to moderate symptoms and are not hospitalized. Patients receive the medication through an IV for three days. Time now, 8.40, 36 degrees out. We're taking you to a place where foodies can enjoy noodles prepared oh. in a variety of ways. You hungry already? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, you don't need to stress out during a home renovation. We're going to explain how you can keep calm. Okay, it finally went up to 36 degrees. It was 34. <laughs> it looks gorgeous out there, though. It looks gorgeous, but burr, it is cold outside. Sarah Spivey will have our weekend forecast when we come back. Well, home renovations and remodeling projects are messy and can be frustrating and stressful if you find yourself living in a dirty construction zone. All right, so in this morning's Ask Angie segment, RJ Marquez discussing multiple ways to keep your home clean and your mind calm while simultaneously tackling these home remodeling projects. Remodeling projects can be stressful enough without having to deal with the mess they tend to create along the way. That's why it's so important to prepare for a big remodeling project. Dust, dirt, and debris from construction mess can ultimately feel like glitter. It goes in every crevice and feels impossible to get rid of. To avoid this and keep your belongings clean, I'd start by prepping the area really well. Remove everything you can, all your belongings, and even things that might be affixed to the wall, like light fixtures, art, and other valuables. Cover heavier furniture that can't be moved with plastic to keep it clean. Also consider covering furniture in adjacent rooms to avoid the mess from spreading. If possible, seal off the area by hanging plastic sheets over windows and doorways. This will help contain the dust and dirt to one area. Depending on where your project is in your home, you're likely to have pros walking through multiple rooms every day. To keep the work boots and debris contained, create a designated walkway. You can use craft paper, tarps, plastic sheeting, or even old rugs and sheets to create a designated area that will stay clean as pros work throughout the house and also create a pathway to rooms they'll need like the bathroom. Creating a daily cleaning routine will help avoid a major mess at the end of the project. Ask contractors to move clutter before the end of each workday and to isolate construction materials to the remodeling area. You can prevent the buildup of any dust and debris by also cleaning regularly. At the end of each workday, sort of start at the top. So use a cleaning spray and a soft cloth to wipe down any hard surfaces, and then eventually get to the floor where you'll want to vacuum or sweep as appropriate. In addition to covering your windows with plastic film, try to remove screens and open the windows as much as possible throughout the project. This will avoid drywall dust from sticking to the screens. If your screens get dusty, try to vacuum them or brush dust off with a soft bristle brush. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. All right, switching gears right now. It is 36 degrees, Sarah Spivey. You said a warm up perpetually throughout the day? Yeah, but it's not going to get too warm, Max or Sarah. It's, in fact, it's going to stay cool all day. We may only top off in the low 50s. Take a look outside right now. We are dealing with some sun. Yay, we've got some sun in San Antonio. But enjoy it while you can, because look up on the horizon. You can see the clouds increasing there, and even a look at the satellite and radar, and clouds have been increasing from the south and from the west. Let's take a wider view here, completely overcast. Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Catula, even down in Atascosa County, starting to see overcast skies, too. So for the first part of the day here, we'll have sun. Second part of the day, we'll see increasing clouds. It's cold out there right now this morning. In fact, it's below freezing in Kerrville at 28 degrees, 28 in Hondo, 30 in New Brom well below freezing generally north of Highway 90, but at the airport right now it's 34 degrees. We did touch freezing briefly at the airport uh, and these areas that are dealing with the cloud cover right now, like Pleasanton, going to be hard to get out of the uh, 40s in some of these areas that have already started off with clouds. Let's take you through the future cast. I do expect for skies uh, to become cloudy in the afternoon around San Antonio, uh, and our high temperature will only be able to top off in the low to mid 50s, right around 52 for the high in San Antonio, 54 in New Braunfels, 51 in Kerrville, and further out to the west, where again we're dealing with the cloud cover. It should try to it should 
did struggle to get out of the 40s today. So Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, Laredo, all going to be on the chilly side today. In fact, we're all going to be cool. Again, 52 is, is quite cooler than seasonably average. And then in the overnight hours with the clouds in place, we're not going to be able to cool down all that much. It'll still be chilly tomorrow morning with morning lows in the low 40s, low to mid 40s. But I don't anticipate us seeing another freeze tomorrow morning. So you can allow those plants to be outside at least for the next 48 hours or so. Uh, so again, it is very dry. Dew points are in the teens. That's at the bottom of our dew point scale here. And really over the next few days, we'll only see them going up and down into like the 30s and even into the 40s. So it's going to stay dry. We're going to have very dry chapstick weather for us. And speaking of dry, we see drought really increasing around San Antonio and South Central Texas. Some moderate drought has moved into Bear County uh, and even some severe drought out in Valverde County and parts of the Hill Country. But real, really the bullseye of the drought is across areas like Carrizo Springs, Catula, Frio County. Those areas are under an extreme drought and we do have a chance for rain in the forecast for a good portion of Texas. So that's really good news because 70% of the state is under drought conditions. Our chance for rain arrives Monday, especially during the first part of the day on Monday. We've got a 60% chance for scattered showers, and it's all because of this trough of low pressure, which is currently over Arizona and Baja California. That's going to be moving uh, eastward and bringing us the chance for rain in San Antonio, mainly for the first part of the day Monday. Scattered showers, as you can see on the future cast, and then by the later afternoon, that'll be well to the east. Areas that should get the most rainfall are going to be along and east of 281, but around San Antonio, a quarter to half an inch of rain is a good bet with unfortunately less rain out to the west. So today is going to be a day where skies are going to become cloudy in the afternoon. It'll be cool with a high temperature only near 52 and tomorrow cloudy all day long. 52 for the high tomorrow as well. There's our chance for rain on Monday. 60% chance for scattered showers. It's going to be a cool week. The only day that we'll get up into the 60s really this week is going to be Tuesday because another cold front is going to move through. Hey, we just got the pollen count in. It looks good. I'll have an updated look at that pollen count in the next half hour of GMSA. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 850, 36 degrees out. We're taking you to a restaurant that prepares and serves noodles in fun ways. Dan Dan noodles are made with handmade noodles that get prepared with pork, peanuts, hot oil, preserved mustard greens, and Sichuan peppercorns. This is a famous Sichuan noodle dish, the Dan Dan noodles. Uh, you can see they mix everything up. I mean, I don't know, there was, a copious amount of seasoning and different spices and different oils and things that were put on top and oh, it just smells absolutely incredible. When you come here, this is the dish to try. You know, you saw all the different seasonings, all the spices that went into it, but when you try it, it has this one uniform flavor that's a little savory, it's a little bit spicy, not like too spicy. Noodles good. can be fun. You good? Yeah, noodles yeah. are fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> 854, I've never heard that before. 36 degrees out. Well, how you can ask a city official questions about how the city prepares for bad weather, that's coming up. Good morning and welcome back. We know when San Antonio prepares for a big weather event, there is a lot of preparation that goes into it and a lot of decision making along the way. That's why tomorrow on Leading SA at 8 a.m. we are going to be joined by Maria Villa Gomez, Deputy City Manager, to talk about preparations, working with CPS and SAWS, and how the city learned from what happened during last year's freeze. If you have any questions you would like to be asked, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Time now, 8.57, 37 degrees out. We'll share a story with you about the importance of remembering the Holocaust and the victims and how the San Antonio Public Library is teaming up with the Holocaust Memorial Museum to educate everyone. All right, we are getting close to the March primary election. Early voting is starts in February and 
The cutoff to register, it is in the end of January. A few things that you need to know, especially with a new Texas voting law in effect. We're going to explain in just a few moments. Okay, 37 degrees outside. I mean, it's better than the 34 degrees we were <laughs> seeing all morning, but it's a chilly one. Sarah Spivey has our full weekend forecast in just a bit. All right, good morning. Nine o'clock this morning, January 22nd. As Sarah was saying, we've been in 30s throughout the morning. When you walked outside to get your car, what does the uh, the outfit look like? Five uh, layers? Okay, that's a little dramatic. Okay. <laughs> but it's definitely like a fleece, a hat, a jacket. Okay. The, no scarf? No, no scarf. But mm. I have the fleece that goes all the way up. You have to cover your neck, Sarah. It's true. That, it's true. And then Mike Osterhage texted you the other day saying, he did. Pull when I was out up. there, he, that was such a dad thing. He wanted to make sure that I was as warm. <laughs> and I was. I did. I, I was very warm. But I, hey, I want to start off the, the forecast with some good news. Pollen count came in. It's a good looking pollen count today. You know, we haven't seen mountain cedar this low in a long time. So molds are low at 140 and mountain cedar is low at 80. And hey, we're seeing some sun out there in San Antonio right now, but it's a tale of of two types of skies. All right, we've got clouds off to our west and to our south while we're seeing some sun here in San Antonio, but it is going to be a temporary sunshine. I think in the afternoon we'll be seeing clouds increase around San Antonio, but look at these temps 37 at the airport right now, 33 at JBSA Randolph, 32 at Bernie Stage Airfield and below freezing in Kerrville too, where it's 28. A wider view. Look, we're right on the clearing line. I think along I-10 and west, you're seeing the cloud cover. And then uh, 37 and west on the south side, that's where you're seeing the cloud cover too. So Yavaldi, Hondo, Del Rio, Carrizo Springs, Rock Springs, Catula, all under a thick deck of cloud cover. And this is going to have a big impact on our temperatures this afternoon. Take a look at the future cast. Again, skies are going to become cloudy in San Antonio in the afternoon. But because it's going to stay cloudy out toward the west, Del Rio, Uvalde, Eagle Pass struggling to get out of the 40s today. Well, I do think we'll get up into the 50s here in San Antonio and across New Braunfels and points to the east, but it's still going to be a cool day no matter which way you look at it. 52 is cool and we will see increasing clouds and then tomorrow completely cloudy. Although here's the good news about that cloud cover tomorrow. It'll keep us from getting to freezing early tomorrow morning. So all in all, a generally gray and cool weekend for us. But coming up, we'll talk about our best chance for rain in a while. I will arrive on Monday. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, an arrest made in a murder case from last month after the suspect allegedly confessed to the crime. Now, according to an arrest affidavit, this man on your screen, 24 year old Aaron Gutierrez was arrested for drugs and weapons charges. But during his interview, detectives say he admitted to being involved in a deadly shooting from back on December 16th. It happened on Hay Street near North New Braunfels Avenue. 35 year old Maria Gonzalez was shot and killed after a night out with friends. Gutierrez is now facing a murder charge, among other charges. All right, we are gearing up for the March primary election and a new Texas voting law is causing some from some confusion for those who are trying to submit an application for mail in or absentee ballots. So listen up. Senate Bill 1 made big changes to the application. So far, the Bear County's Elections Office, they've already had to reject more than 300 applications because of human error. Now, one of those is using an old application. You have to use the 2022 application where your Texas driver's license number or the last four digits of your social security number has to be written in. Some of those people did not give us those numbers because it wasn't required when they registered to vote years ago. So if they send in their application and we don't have a number to match it to, then we have to reject other changes to the form include having to submit the application in writing and signed in ink and elections officials may not distribute mail in ballots or an application for a mail in ballot to anyone who does not submit a request for one. So remember, you have to submit a request for one if you want one. All applications have to be received by February 18th. We have a lot more details on the changes and how to get your application. Just head to KSAT.com. Also online, if you want to look at the full ballot for the March primaries, we have both the Republican and Democratic Party ballots available on KSAT.com. You can find the most up-to-date coverage on the 2022 elections. Just click on the Vote 2022 section right under the News tab. And remember, you have until January 31st to register to vote.
Well, substitute teachers are needed now more than ever during this pandemic. The Omicron variant has doubled the staff absentee rate at Northeast ISD compared to pre-pandemic numbers. And not just any ISD, but all across the city, schools are having to get creative on ways to keep the learning going. Myra Arthur talked to two women now subbing who want you to know even if you've never taught before, you can still step in front of the class. In the first grade class, they were having a inconsistent substitute and I asked how I could help. Hallie Ramirez worried about that inconsistency. A former teacher, she's now back at it as a sub at East Terrell Hills Elementary. This week has been our craziest week because I've had several out. And she's just talking about students out because of COVID, but teachers and staff are absent too. When schools can't find subs, principals step in to teach or NEISD combines classes, even pulling staff from the central office to help out. Especially since we've come back from the winter break, we've had as many as 15 staff members on any given day. A normal rate, I would say on average, is, is three or four teachers that are out. There was a gal subbing last week in first grade, and she also had to do crossing guard, so she couldn't take her kids at the end of the day to where they needed to be because she had to be out on the street. And so we covered for her while she did her other job. But you don't have to have prior teaching experience in order to help out. We talked to a college student who started subbing just this week in Northside ISD. This is my first time in an elementary school classroom, yes. She's heard what Northside teachers are dealing with. Her sister is one of them. I know that if she's going through it, so are so many teachers across the district. I want to help out as many teachers as I can to kind of lessen the stress. I think it's a community issue because these kids are our future. So whether it's subbing or coming and sitting with a class or helping at, at lunch, there's places you can help. And that was Myra Arthur reporting. So if you want to sub, some districts have changed the requirements and even increased the pay. We have links to those requirements and pay for Northside, Northeast, and SAISD on our website right now. All right, time now, 9.07, 37 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, San Antonio libraries along with the San Antonio Memorial Museum are celebrating and remembering the importance of remembering the Holocaust. We'll explain when we come back. Taking a live look out here at Meals on Wheels. All right, a lot going on this morning, trying to help those people get prepared. So we're going to hear from John and the Koto in just a few moments. But first, we're going to take a look outside with live cam. It is a cold morning, 37 degrees. Will it warm up at all? Sarah Spivey will let us know when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. All right, we know a lot going on this morning. Jonathan Cotto talking to people at Meals on Wheels this morning. Yeah, they're prepping meals for especially those who are older and maybe who can't get out. And Jonathan is there with the organization. Good morning, Max and Sarah. I'm hanging out here on the corner of Higgins and Nacogdoches with Meals and Wheels and about 400 volunteers that are prepping these bags that will be getting delivered to about 4,000 folks across San Antonio, all this in preparation of any type of inclement weather. But with me is Forrest, no stranger to our cameras. Forrest, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being out here. Now, we know uh, about roughly how many meals will be distributed this morning. So this is going to be about 22,000 meals altogether that are going to go out to 4,500 clients across Bear County and a few surrounding counties. Uh, we have about 400 volunteers coming today to pick up these boxes. They're the equivalent of five days worth of calories. And so that'll be going out along with waters and heating blankets and uh, hand warmers and things like that. Forrest, what have the last couple of days or perhaps even weeks looked like uh, in preparation for today? It's been a lot of rallying the troops, so getting all of our volunteers excited and signed up to come out here today, talking to our sponsors who sponsored all of these products that we're sending out, uh, and then assembling and prepping these boxes so that we can make sure that clients have food that's easy to eat, easy to open, um, and doesn't require a lot of preparation just in case the power goes out, which hopefully won't be a problem this year. Now, Forrest, did folks register for this, and or how did we identify those who need um, one of these awesome boxes? So every one of our 4,500 clients is getting one of these boxes. We serve 4,500 across eight counties right now, so all of them are getting boxes, kind of regardless of what their situation is. We want to make sure everybody's ready. 
Well, thank you so much, folks. Max and Sarah, there you have it. Over 4,000 people will be receiving a box of some of these non-perishable items to serve as a supplement in case of any type of weather emergency. Max, Sarah. All right, so you see John the Coto out there with the scarf and the coat, Sarah Spivey. We don't expect any weather emergency anytime soon, right? No, okay, <laughs> we don't. Uh, okay. And, you know, temperatures today will kind of be all over the place, all because of cloud cover, guys. It's mm. a big factor today. Generally, if you live west of San Antonio, you're going to stay cloudy all day. If you live in San Antonio to the east, you're actually seeing some sun. Yay! But it will get cloudy oh, later okay. today. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look roller outside. Yeah, roller, <laughs> roller coaster, exactly right. Take a look at, at this camera right now. Looking off to the west, you can see the clouds there off in the distance, but at the same time at the airport right now, it's sunny and it's reading sunny and 37 degrees. So it's cold, even though the sun is shining. And in fact, we've got a wind chill winds from the northeast at seven miles per hour make it feel like it's 32 degrees out there and it is very dry with dew points in the teens satellite showing those clouds off to the west and to the south of San Antonio. Currently seeing sunshine in San Antonio in New Braunfels, but even up toward Bernie, clouds are increasing as we speak and it's completely cloudy in Kerrville right now where it's 28 degrees 37 in Hondo 38 in Pleasanton where we're seeing complete cloud cover complete cloud cover in Del Rio Creaser Springs Uvalde 45 in Del Rio right now and if you are experiencing complete cloud cover right now you're going to be one of the coolest spots on the map today because temperatures are going to be socked in with uh, temperatures in the 40s because of the cloud cover there. But even in San Antonio, we're seeing some sun right now, but into the afternoon it is going to become cloudy. Uh, and so most of the weekend sh should be fairly gray for many folks. Take a look at today's forecast highs. I mentioned that off to the west, it's cloudy right now. And that's where highs are going to struggle to get out of the 40s. We're talking about a high temperature 49, 50 degrees in Del Rio and in Valley and even in Kerrville, I think it's going to be hard for us to get into the into the 50s up in Kerrville this afternoon. Around San Antonio, though, low to mid 50s are a good bet and we need some rain. It's been so dry. We could use a little bit of rain and the good news is with the system spinning to our west, we have a decent chance for some some rain in San Antonio. This upper level low is going to be moving into uh, Texas over the next 48 hours, bringing a ch good chance for rain in San Antonio, mainly for the first part of Monday. So let me take you through that future cast. You can see that showers are likely early Monday morning and into the uh, early afternoon on Monday. We'll see some rain still lingering around before it clears off. So how much rain could we see on Monday? Well, it's a good bet around San Antonio, about a quarter to half an inch of rainfall, which is a decent amount of rain. Unfortunately, for areas that are really struggling with drought off to the west, only looking at maybe a tenth of an inch of rainfall possible, so that's not going to help out the drought condition too much. And then up to about an inch of rain the further east you go toward Houston. So just a reminder, today is going to be a day where we are going to see increasing clouds in San Antonio. But if you're seeing complete cloud cover right now, like off to the west, you're likely going to stay cloudy uh, all day long. Highs will struggle to get out of the low 50s. We'll be in the 40s for most of the day anyway, so it's going to be a chilly day. East winds at 5 to 10 and a high right around 52. Now, the good news is if you're somebody who has a beautiful garden <laughs> that you don't want to bring your plants in anymore, tomorrow morning I don't think we're going to have a freeze because of those clouds acting like a blanket uh, and 52 for the high tomorrow. There's that chance for scattered showers Monday. Hey, guess what? This this week we're really not going to warm up all that much. The warmest we get is Tuesday when we top off at 64. Otherwise, though, it's going to feel a lot like San Antonio winter out there with highs in the 50s. Mm. Sarah and Max about 20 pots of plants in my garage right now. It's a it's such a workout bringing them in and out. <laughs> Time now 917 <laughs> 38 degrees. Out. We'll be right back. Educating the community about the, about the atrocities of the Holocaust and remembering the victims. Those are the goals behind the San Antonio Public Library and the Holocaust Memorial Museum of San Antonio's Holocaust Learn and Remember series. I spoke with organizers about why 80 years later it's still crucial to remember those events that took place between 1941 and 1945. We can all be an upstander. Our head and let things happen is just not acceptable. We've got to be able to, to, to make a difference, whatever we can do in our capacity. 
standing up and doing is crucial for humanity and the reason behind the month-long Holocaust are putting on the series that will include in-person and online center campus. It's where you can see several images and artifacts highlighting We're focusing on people who were displaced by the Holocaust, people who moved to other countries. displaced people from the Holocaust and their resilience. The week will speaker event on the International Holocaust Remembrance Day on January 27th. It's really critically important that we as a community and as a people step back to reflect and learn about what's happened in our recent history so that we can try our best to avoid it happening again. Ikalov says especially with recent events at the Dallas area center, even the local anti-Semitic material and protests that occurred in October of last year, it is more important than ever to remember and learn from the past to become better as a society. We work really hard at making sure that people understand that standing up for anybody, standing up for any minority group, standing up for any uh, group support is a critical aspect of, of just being a human being. I actually got an email from a viewer um, yesterday asking if this event is virtual. Yes. Mm -hmm. There are there's in person of part events and then there's virtual events and you can find all the links to that right now on ksat.com. Yeah, really an important story. Two of my grandparents were Holocaust survivors and we've seen just a myriad of, you know, anti-Semitism recently. We had the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh a couple years ago and then recently in Colleyville. So stories like this, presentations like these are so important. Absolutely. Time now, 922, 38 degrees now. Coming up ap after the break, another look at today's episode of Some um, sweet and savory dishes. Waffle batter gets poured into a screaming hot waffle iron and gets cooking. Then Three chicken tenders, brined overnight for maximum flavor and texture, get battered in a seasoned flour dredge and buttermilk mixture and tossed into the fryer to finish. When the waffles are ready, they get tossed with a cinnamon and sugar spice blend and the whole plate gets covered in powdered sugar. Get some of your syrup, this is where it's at. <laughs> That's awesome. Chicken and waffles, man, it's so good. The chicken has a really nice flavor to it, and you can tell from that brining process, the flavor goes all throughout. And then on the inside as well, from that buttermilk, nice and creamy, it stays moist. Outside has a nice crunch to it. And then you tackle it there with some of the waffle. Yeah, breakfast yeah. champions. That looks amazing. Time now, 927, 38 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, some schools are reinstating their mask mandates for students and it's becoming a hot topic with parents the latest on that situation that's coming up after the break 
Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. 9.30 this morning, January 22nd. We've been saying it throughout the morning. It's like that one to two weeks of San Antonio where it actually feels like winter. Yeah, definitely winter. Uh, my, my entire, all my plants are dead. Oh. Aww. I mean, some of them I brought in, the, the right. potted yeah. ones, you know. Yeah. But the, the grass everywhere looks real dry. Sarah, I know we also are in desperate need of, of rain. We are. Drought conditions have moved into San Antonio once again, and it's getting pretty bad off to the west. But we do have a chance for rain in the forecast over the next couple of days. The first thing I want to show you is a look outside right at the airport. We've been showing you this western view here for the morning, and, and the clouds are increasing from the west. And it's a bit of a, a mixed bag on whether or not you're going to warm up into the 50s today. Basically, if you're completely overcast right now, I think temperatures are going to struggle to get out of the 40s. But if you are seeing some sun, getting into the 50s is entirely possible. Take a look at the satellite right now. Generally west of I-10, and west of 37, we're seeing complete cloud cover, and even those clouds are starting to move on into San Antonio from the south and from the west. Temperatures are cold. It's 32 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 30 in Kerrville, 33 at JBSA Randolph, and 37 in New Braunfels. A wider view here, and you'll notice how cloudy it is for Del Rio. It's been completely cloudy there in Valverde County and in Del Rio. Temperatures there are in the 40s, and they're really not going to budge all that much from where they're at right now. Let's take a look at the potential uh, high temperatures today. These are the forecast highs. Notice that the further west you go, the colder it's going to stay. Temperatures are going to struggle to get out of the 40s because they're in complete cloud cover right now. Meanwhile, around San Antonio and points to the east, Getting into the 50s is entirely possible, but we are going to see increasing clouds today around San Antonio. It's going to be cool all weekend long. Our temperatures are going to struggle to get out of the 50s all weekend long. And we do have that rain chance to talk about on Monday. So I'll have a look at the forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. All right, thank you, Sarah. Well, new into the newsroom, breaking news, police investigating a possible homicide. All of this happening in the 200 block of Post Avenue near Broadway, just northeast of downtown. Yeah, this is actually near Brackenridge Park, and that is where we find Jonathan Cotto live. Jonathan, what have you found out? Good morning, Sarah. I'm located right now on the 200 block of Post Avenue here, right off of Broadway, not too far down the street from the museum. Now, information is limited, but let me tell you what we have so far here and show you the scene here at the distance. San Antonio police responding to the 200 block of Post Avenue, receiving a call shortly after 7 o'clock this morning. They made the discovery of a woman with visible injuries dead on the sidewalk. Police tell us her body was found halfway onto that driveway and on the sidewalk. I'd walk to say a passerby made that call again. That was uh, shortly after seven o'clock this morning. Now, police are still investigating uh, any uh, some possible leads right now as to exactly what took place here this morning. They say that woman was middle aged. Uh, medical examiners making the scene right now. Homicide uh, detectives investigating and speaking with the owners of the home uh, where that body was found uh, outside. Again, information is limited, but of course this case continues to be investigation uh, under investigation. We're going to remain on scene and update you as more information is made available. Reporting live northeast of downtown, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. It has been a busy last 24 hours for local police. San Antonio police responding to multiple shootings overnight and early this morning, all in different parts of the city. The latest shooting happened around 430 this morning. This is Cumberland Road near South Brazo Street, just northwest of I-35 and Highway 90 interchange. Officers on the scene telling us a man was sitting at his kitchen in his home when he heard several gunshots. A stray bullet hit the man in the leg. He was taken to Bamsey. He is expected to be okay. Officers then finding, look at this, 50 shell casings right in the middle of the street. So far, no arrests have been made and still unclear what prompted the shooting. An overnight argument turns into a shooting and sent one woman to the hospital with a gunshot wound to her head. Police arrived to a home on Darren Wing on the city's northeast side around 245 this morning. They say they found the woman on the ground with a gunshot wound to her head. Authorities say some sort of sort of argument occurred between the woman and her boyfriend. That boyfriend was detained by police, but he has not been charged yet. And the woman was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Police are still investigating. 
And police still searching for a suspect in another shooting. This one happening just after midnight on the northeast side. Police saying a man taking the trash to the dumpster at his apartment complex. That's when someone walked up to him and shot him in the leg. This happened off Shirts Road near Thousands Oaks, just north of Warsbach Parkway, not too far from Morgan's Wonderland and Hero Stadium. The man taken to Bamsey expected to be okay, but right now, police looking for who is responsible. Right now, the only lead they have is that the suspect took off in a black vehicle. Well, now the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Bear County. Metro Health reporting over 5,300 new cases yesterday. Another 16 people have died from this virus, and the seven-day moving average is close to 6,200. It's also reporting over 1,200 COVID-19 patients in the hospital as of last night. 260 of them are in the ICU and 115 are on ventilators. All right, so some states are now shifting their policies on masks in schools. It's clearly a very... Hot topic, especially one that has parents very divided. As ABC's Zareen Shaw reports, schools are becoming a political battleground. At one school across the country, a parent arrested for making dangerous threats over the mask rule at her child's school. This morning, as some states report turning the corner with the Omicron surge, the debate over masking children at schools is heating up. This school board meeting in Virginia taking a wild turn Thursday as a Page County parent was arrested and released on a $5,000 bond after she was captured on tape threatening to bring guns to her children's school if the district continued to enforce their mask mandate. My children will not come to school on Monday with a mask on. All right, that's not happening. And I will bring every single gun loaded and ready to, I, I will call every. Okay, that's three minutes. She later told police her statement was not intended the way it was perceived. In a statement, the school saying Page County Public Schools does not take these kind of statements lightly and that they are in contact with local law enforcement. And the newly minted Virginia governor signing an executive order lifting mask mandates, creating an opt out for schools starting Monday and dividing parents. He will attend on Monday without his mask on. And if they throw him out of school, I'll be in court. Omicron is, I mean, as we've seen, surging like crazy. And I just worry that that lifting any mask mandate is just too early during a surge. In Florida, the governor signing a law prohibiting mask mandates for kids, but requiring them for teachers. With cases on the decline in New Jersey, their governor telling a local station he thinks there's a good possibility children can come to school without any masks before the end of the school year. I think there's a real shot of that. We're early days in terms of turning the corner, but it certainly looks like we've begun to turn the corner here, God willing. In the meantime, doctors stress mandatory mask wearing significantly cuts down on COVID spread and that the real pandemic stress for kids is typically over isolation or seeing the financial struggles their parents face with mask wearing far down the list. Children and adolescents may find face masks annoying. They may find them difficult to wear the right way, but they generally take their cues from the adults in their environment. New York's governor says the school mask mandate there could be ending soon. And here in California, a new proposal would let kids as young as 12 get a vaccine without their parents' consent. Officials saying some parents are getting in their kids' way. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, time now, 939, 39 degrees though. 39 degrees. Now, Sarah Spipe. Oh. What are we looking at there? Interesting. That is the city of San Antonio. That is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that, Max. <laughs> Sarah Spivey will have our forecast when we come back. Well, if you've noticed smoke in the air on the city's Ooh. north side, don't be alarmed. Crews are carefully burning more than 1,700 acres in the area of Camp Bullis. The goal is to get rid of any dry brush and lessen the risk of other fires in the future. This prescribed burn is expected to happen for the next few days. Well, if you're interested in learning about the different educational options out there for your children, a local nonprofit and the San Antonio Food Bank will be hosting a citywide school fair for families to attend. It's part of National School Choice Week, which begins tomorrow. This is a chance to meet with representatives from schools across the city and learn about the most beneficial options for your child's education. There will be reps from public and private and charter schools ranging from pre-K to 12th grade. 
There will also be some fun activities and snacks for the kids. The school fair will be next Saturday, January 29th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the San Antonio Food Bank off Enrique Barrera Parkway. That's near 151. All right, we know when San Antonio prepares for a big weather event, there is a lot of preparation that goes into it. There's a lot of decision making along the way. That is why tomorrow on Leading SA at 8 a.m., we're going to be joined by Maria Villa Gomez, Deputy City Manager. We're going to be talking about preparations, working with CPS and SAWS, and how the city has learned from what happened last year during the Texas freeze. So if you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. And... We're going live to the Weather Center right now. Sarah Spivey, you've been working the last couple days. Oh yeah, for sure, because this cold air is here and you know, we are really not gonna be warming up too much today or this weekend, but I do have some good news in the weather forecast. The pollen count looks great today. Molds are low at 140 and Mountain Cedar is the lowest it's been in a long time at 80. So maybe a bit of a reprieve there uh, for the mountain cedar uh, allergy sufferers outside right now. Looking to the west, you can see that clouds are increasing in San Antonio and it's a tale of sunny and cloudy skies pretty much divided right down the middle uh, of our viewing area. Take a look at the satellite right now and temperatures. It's cold out there. First of all, temperatures are in the 30s generally around San Antonio, uh, but look at the cloud cover just really starting to move in from the west. So if you see cloud cover right now, you're not going to see any sun. If you're seeing sun right now, like on New Braunfels and Seguin, these clouds are going to increase throughout the day and into the afternoon. It'll be getting cloudy. So increasing clouds today and temperatures will struggle to get out of the 40s in many places, like especially off to the west. It's 45 in Del Rio right now, 39 in Uvalde and 41 in Carrizo Springs. Take a look at the future cast again, the cloud cover spreading off to the east. And so highs today are going to be limited into the 40s for Uvalde, Rock Springs, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, and to near 50 degrees around San Antonio. We're seeing sun right now in San Antonio, but the afternoon is going to be fairly cloudy. 54 for the high in New Braunfels. Now here's some good news. If you uh, have any potted plants that you want to bring outside or you don't want to keep them indoors tomorrow morning. We do not expect to freeze early in the morning hours. In fact, we should be looking at a morning low likely right close to 40 degrees in San Antonio. So not expecting a freeze tomorrow morning. But it is going to stay dry throughout this weekend. Chapstick weather, static electricity weather with dew points in the teens. They're really not going to raise all that much uh, from where they are at right now. Speaking of dry, Drought conditions are increasing around South Central Texas. We're seeing some moderate drought working its way into San Antonio from the west and then severe drought across parts of the hill country. Extreme drought in our southwestern counties, Carrizo Springs, Catula, Southern Frio County dealing with extreme drought. And the good news is even though 70% of the state of Texas is in drought, we anticipate a chance for rain in the next couple of days. Monday, good chance for some scattered showers, especially during the first part of the day. All because there's a trough of low pressure out near Arizona right now in Baja, California. That's going to be bringing some energy our way by Monday and producing some scattered showers. So let me take you through the future cast here. You can see during the first part of the day Monday, we have a good chance for scattered showers, not necessarily out west. So you know that area that's struggling with extreme drought a smaller chance for rain than here in San Antonio. And then by the second part of the day on Monday, that rain will be well to the east. So how much rain could we see? Around San Antonio, a quarter to half an inch of rain is a good bet. Further off to the east, more like a half an inch to an inch of rain. And again, only a tenth of an inch of rain possible in areas like Del Rio, Carrizo Springs, Uvalde. But today is going to be a, a cool day with increasing cloud cover. We're already seeing the clouds move in from the west. We'll still be in the 40s by noon, 52 for the high in San Antonio. East winds at 5 to 10. Above freezing tomorrow morning, but socked into cloud cover tomorrow, 52 for the high tomorrow as well. So a chilly weekend for us. And there's that chance for rain Monday. Scattered showers, a high in the mid 50s. The warmest will be over the next seven days is only 64 on Tuesday. So get some good use out of your sweaters <laughs> this week. We don't get to use them all that often here in South Central Texas. Sarah, Max, like the the fuzzy kind, the kind, mm. you know, like the fuzzy warm. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't know what I'm talking about. No. Right? 
Not 48, 40 degrees. Look at that, 40 degrees. All right, go Spurs go, question mark? No, there's an answer, always go Spurs go. <laughs> A special night, we welcomed Patty Mills back, but he was on the opposing team. We're gonna have highlights, what happened and what comes next. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, two, six, eight, fireball five, daily four, five, four, three, five, fireball nine. Cash five, three, 19, 24, 25, 26. Here we go. How much do you say this was up to? Okay, hold on. Read the numbers. And I'll I'm going to read the numbers. All right, 38, 45, 46, 55, 67, big number 18, Mega Player 2. 396 million. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back. And of course, go Spurs go. A special night here in the Alamo City. Patty Mills making his return to San Antonio after watching his tribute video. Patty walked over to the Spurs bench. Huge hug from Coach Pop before the new Brooklyn Net challenged his former team at the AT&T Center. Spurs did get off to a slow start, but we got a few highlights to show you. Look at that beautiful pass. DeJounte underneath. A little layup, gotta love it. DeJounte, he's been killing it. Second consecutive triple-double. Lonnie in the lane. That's our guy, Jacopotl, boom, finish strong. And here we go, running the break again, DeJounte up, and that is good. Here's the problem though, the Nets, they did catch fire at one point, Harden went off, Kyrie had some nice highlights. Patty, there you go, a little shot attempt. Okay, we'll take it. But in the end, the Spurs could not hold on, although good defensive play going on right there. Uh, Spurs would fall to the Nets, 117 to 102. I think it was just one of those nights where we couldn't couldn't find a basket really. I don't think it was, it was specifically their defense. Uh, I mean, they didn't play bad defense, but still, like, I think it was it was on us missing those shots. All right. So before his first game back last night as a member of the Brooklyn Nets, Patty Mills he met with the media at the team shoot around. It was there that he told us it was tough, clearly tough for him to make the decision to go to the Nets. And it all happened in the middle of the Summer Olympics when he was t playing for Team Australia. Even having to text Pop with his decision mm. at four in the morning. That gets me every time. <laughs> Tokyo time after being with the Spurs for a decade, unable to meet with Coach Pop. Remember, because this was all in the midst of COVID restrictions. It was uh, very emotional. It was a, um, you know, a, a career-changing decision. Um, and now that you know it's been made, and um, you know, just very glad of, of the opportunities that I had here in, in San Antonio to not only um, through basketball, but um, off the court, more importantly, and being able to, you know, do a lot of growing up here and, and a lot of adulting, uh, I guess, and um, you know. A lot of the values that, that I learned from, from being here off the court, I think um, I've really appreciated. Uh, so Sarah Costa, a little salty about it because technically he did break up with the Spurs via text. Yes, he did. Uh, also, shout out to LaMarcus Aldridge. He was back last night with the Nets as well. So next up for the Spurs, another home game tomorrow night. They're hosting the Philadelphia 76ers. Tip off set, 6 p.m. here at home, AT&T Center. But don't worry, you don't have to wait. Until then, to watch sports. Divisional round of the NFL playoffs beginning today. Two games, the Bengals at the Titans, 3.30, and the Niners at Green Bay tonight, 7.15. The other two playoff games taking place tomorrow. That is the Rams at the Bucks and the Bills at the Chiefs. I'm just going to throw this out here, not that anyone's asking. I'm going to say Titans-Packers wins today. Really? Yep. Not the Bengals? Not the Bengals. Mm -hmm. I love Joe Burrow, but yeah, the yeah. Titans, you know, yeah, yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> King Henry, 955, 41 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. Right now, San Antonio police responding to the scene of a possible homicide here at the distance. Homicide detectives searching possible leads. We know that a middle-aged woman was found dead on the driveway at the home here at the distance. Right now, information is limited, but we do know that a passerby made that discovery, called in police shortly after seven o'clock this morning. San Antonio police, along with homicide, still investigating this case. We'll update you as more information is made available. Reporting northeast of downtown, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News.
For the first time in a while, mountain cedar is pretty low, only at 80. Molds are low, too, at 140. Take a look at these clouds. They are increasing around San Antonio. It's going to be a mainly gray day today with highs struggling to get out of the 40s. 45 at noon, 52 for the afternoon high temperature. Tomorrow morning, we'll start off at 41. Cloudy all day tomorrow. A good chance for rain Monday. We'll have 60% chance for scattered showers. Much needed rain. And it's going to be a fairly cool week. The warmest we're going to get is 64 on Tuesday, but another cool front moves on through, uh, chilling us down even more. The good news is I don't anticipate a freeze in San Antonio for the next about 48 hours at least. Ooh. All right, we have a special episode of Texas Seats coming up in about 40 seconds. Yeah, they have some scratch made quesadillas from and tacos from Mexico. All right, and we have Chinese noodle house. There we go, the Chinese noodle house. Classic Sichuan dishes and of course, fried chicken with waffles. There we yeah. go. Chicken and waffles, <laughs> breakfast of champions. So you're not going to miss it. 20 seconds. And of course, tomorrow, leading SA, the deputy city manager talking about what goes into city preparations in case there is a weather situation going on. But knock on wood, somewhere, paper, <laughs> nothing uh, we forecast in the foreseeable future. Bye, guys.